This video is by Straight Goods News, sgnews.ca. Most Canadians know the sad story of Canada's second-hand submarine fleet. Purchased from Britain in 1998 for a suspiciously low price, the four vessels have spent most of their last 15 years being refitted and repaired. What most Canadians do not know is that the Victoria-class submarines are now entering their last decade of their service life. And since Canadian no naval procurements typically take 10 to 15 years, Canada's submarine program is destined to splutter to a stop unless the, <clears throat> the procurement of replacements is initiated forthright. The problems began in 1994 after the British decommissioned the submarines but left them in salt water. These vessels languished for four years awaiting a buyer and another two to six years before Canada actually took possession of them. They suffered serious corrosion and to this day the diving depth of the HMCS Windsor is restricted because of rust damage to the hull. In 2004, the HMCS Shikumni was en route to Canada and a fire broke out on board, resulting in one death. <coughs> the cause of the fire was seawater entering through an open hatch, which caused an electrical short. The short occurred because the affected wiring had just one layer of waterproof sealant and not the three that was required by the construction specifications. That same year, a maintenance error destroyed the entire electrical system of the HMCS Victoria. After the accident, the Halifax Chronicle Herald reported that the Navy spent about $200,000 to buy old technology that mirrors the subs uh, British builders used. The equipment that one of the Navy's own electrical technologists said probably goes back to the 1960s. The vessel spent six years undergoing repairs. Last year, HMCS Windsor concluded a refit that was initially supposed to take two years, but took five. Documents obtained by the CBC revealed the reason for the delay. Every system has major problems, including bad welds in the hull, broken torpedo tubes, a faulty rudder, rudder and tiles on the side of the sub that continually fall off. Then last December, a defect was found in one of the HMCS Windsor's engines, or well, two of the diesel engines. The CBC reported that as a result, the vessel's diving depth was restri severely restricted, and the Navy was forced to withdraw the submarine from planned exercises off, off the southern U.S. coast. Publicly, the Navy insists the submarines can be kept in service until 2030. Behind closed hatches, though, admirals must know better. They must be desperate to replace the damaged and unreliable fleet. In 2006, the Senate Committee for National Security and Defense wrote the Victoria-class submarines are approaching their midlife point. As soon as the submarines are fully operational and ready, planning for their midlife refits and eventual replacement should begin. In December 2010, the Department of National Defense produced a strategic plan, Horizon 2050 that anticipated the possible re-emergence of interstate maritime armed conflict, including the possibility of certain states will seek to deny access to their maritime approaches. It warned some adversaries would have the ability to employ more sophisticated aerial denial, denial capabilities using high-end conventional or asymmetric capabilities such as advanced missiles or submarines. That same year, a briefing note prepared for the Chief of Defense Staff argued for new submarines because in the event of global tensions, these relatively cheap assets will counter projection, uh, counter -proje projection of power and hinder freedom of movement, movement and action. When Defense Minister Peter McKay was asked in, to, uh, in October 2011 whether the government might look at replacing Canada's current submarines, he replied that the submarines provide a very important capability for the Canadian forces. Yet, curiously enough, there is no mention of submarines in the National Shipbuilding Procurement Strategy, which extends to 2041 and foresees an expenditure of $33 billion on dozens of surface vessels. The omission cannot be excused on the basis that any new submarines we built outside Canada and therefore fall outside the scope of the National Shipbuilding Strategy. For two of the available options, the French-designed Scorpion 
and the German desi de uh, designed U214 are already built, are already being built in countries that have purchased them. But there are three possible explanations. First, the Harper government has already decided to acquire new submarines and keeping the decision quiet because of the billion dollars it would cost. Second, the government has decided to terminate the Canadian submarine program when the Victoria class reached their end of their service lives. And it's keeping the decision quiet because of the billions of dollars it has already spent trying to rescue the failed procurement. And thirdly, and, most, and the most likely explanation, is gross mismanagement of the file. And if, if that is the case, the lack of a plan will result in the end of Canada's submarine program through neglect, obsolescence, rather than design. This is uh, not simply a question of a military capability that Canada currently has to some degree and may wish to continue. It's not simply a question of quite possibly uh, gross uh, mismanagement of a procurement file. It is also ultimately about the safety of the sailors and soldiers of the Canadian forces, who at the moment have to go to sea in subpar second-hand submarines. And if there is no plan to replace them, maybe going to sea in these same submarines up to and potentially beyond uh, their uh, safe lifespan. So these are really important questions. Uh, our report is uh, intended uh, to raise these questions uh, and to prompt a frank and public discussion uh, with the defense minister uh, and other uh, members of the government uh, so that we can provide the right answers moving forward. I, I don't see a strong case for Canada to require submarines. Um, we remain open-minded. If the government can come back with a convincing case, uh, we will look at it. Uh, but we have gone systematically through all the arguments that have been in the public domain for continuing with Canada's submarine program. And in our view, they have, uh, pardon the pun, they have not held water. Is it sort of worth billions of dollars of scarce Canadian taxpayer money uh, to provide a service to the U.S. Navy, namely to help them train in the detection of quiet diesel electric submarines? Um, because the Americans like having our submarines. They're very quiet and therefore very useful for training purposes. Um, but is that a justification that should matter to, to Canadian taxpayers? And add it to that, the Americans are perfectly capable of finding other diesel electric submarines in the world for training purposes. They, they, actually, uh, they actually rented a, a Swedish submarine for two years precisely for this purpose. Um, and if that's the best argument that, that people can come up with for, for Canada having submarines, um, one can't help but, um, but think that there's a, a problem uh, with this particular uh, effort to, to, to justify a defense expenditure. There are other more important things uh, where our defense dollars uh, could be used.